Hey guys, wonderful to be with you today. I really, um, I really appreciate, appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and I thank you for what you're about to do uh, just permeate the atmosphere with you today. Let Rachel die and let you live. Jesus, I'm yours. I'm just a willing vessel who is willing to spread what you first taught me. And I'm willing to spread your word, the good news of your grace and your love. Thank you, Lord, for just for just being the amazing, wonderful, awesome God you are. Awesome in both senses of the word awesome, as in we stand in awe of you in amazement. Awesome also too, because you're a cool God, you're you're cool to hang out with, and I am just honored to, to be called your daughter. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I, the sermon today is going to be called Between Love and Hard Places. Between Love and Hard Places. I, I, as, as you know, I'm a music person. And for those of you who don't know that, who are new watching this, I'm a music person. I love music. I write music. It's got me through everything. I don't sing, but I am a music person. And there's a song for every mood. Um, And um, I often use sermons. I often use music as the backdrop to my sermons. Um, in fact, when I first started um, doing this on YouTube about 13 years ago, 14 years ago, um, I would play the song, I would get a song, play it, and then preach a sermon. But because of the YouTube rules and because they allow certain songs and they don't allow others, I just stopped doing it altogether. And because God has brought me to another level, I don't need to 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 do that anymore. But I still um have a song in mind um for the majority of my sermons, even though I don't play it anymore. And I may not even mention it in the sermon, but um, I still have a song in mind when I'm preaching a sermon. And I was listening. I was listening to um, "Hard Places" by her, capital H, capital E, capital R. She's an artist who is just amazing. I love her. Uh, she's just amazing. And she has a song called Hard, Hard Places. And uh, Hard Place. And um, it comes from the saying between a rock and a hard place. Um, and there's also a book called Between a Rock and a Hard Place about this man who uh, got stuck, he was hiking, and then his arm got stuck, and to free himself, he had to cut off his own arm. It's an amazing book, it's called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. Um, I read it quite a few years ago, and as I thought of this song, as I thought of this song, I began to think about, and 
as I was listening to this song, the Lord, the, the Lord kind of said, kind of said to me, this is how uh, some people think about me. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they know I love them. They know I can work miracles. They know I can do all that stuff they've heard about it. And sometimes they've experienced it. But, but sometimes uh, they're caught between my love and knowing that I love them and knowing that I love human beings and they're caught between the hard places in their lives and in their world and what they see so and they know what my word says they know what it what is true but at the same time what they see doesn't line up with what they believe. And um, and he said, they're caught between my love and a hard place. Because they, they know I love them, but they're caught between knowing I love them, knowing I can do all this, reading I can do all this, hearing sermon after sermon, and YouTube stuff after YouTube stuff and podcast after podcast about how I've delivered I've delivered other people I've I found husbands and wives for other people I've done all this for other people and it seems like I don't do it for the, for them but I need you to let them know I'm with them in the heart. The Lord wants me to let you know that he is with you in the hard place. And not only is he with you in the hard place, he will teach you in the hard place. And the teaching in the hard place is the tricky part because um, the teaching uh, requires a lesson. And most times, to learn a lesson in a hard place, he needs to um, take you through something that is so uncomfortable. But after that discomfort, if you take in the lesson, that's where the glory comes out of it. Because a lot of us, Uh, like to run from discomfort, but um, discomfort is uh, something that will most likely teach you, at least in my life. When, When things have been uncomfortable, it's been when I've been taught the most, you know. Uh, When things have been uh, when I've uh, been financially strapped, that's how I learned to manage my money better. When I've had to go without key things because I spent my money on not foolish things, but less key things. Um, and, and I've had to go without key things. That's how I learned. And it it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. It was not very comfortable at all. And and he's saying, I will teach you in the hard place if you allow me. I will love you through the hard place. He's like, you. He's like, you don't have to be caught between my love, knowing that I love you, knowing that I died for you, knowing that whatever. No, knowing that I care for you, knowing that I love your kids. And the hard place. 
instead know that I, I will love you through the hard place. My love will become stronger and known in the hard place. Um, I was having a really crappy day on Thursday. Things were just not going well, not physically. Everything was okay physically, but emotionally I was in, I was in, I was not in a good mood. And anyone who knows me knows I'm, I'm really a hopeful person, really positive person. I'm a smiling person. And when I was smiling, I'm not fake smiling. I was smiling because I'm really happy. And things may, things are not always happy, but I've learned to take the lessons and just have joy in spite of. But on Thursday, I was just not doing uh well <laughs> emotionally um and when i got off when i got to my computer um i found a message um from uh, i found a video from my friend, my friend Drew. We've been online friends for about 15 years. Uh, we started messaging back and forth, like uh, about 14, 15, 14, 15 years ago. And we used to send the, these long messages to each other. We don't do that anymore. But I do still, uh, comment very deeply on his on his videos and so I got um I got his post that that just lifted my mood um because he's he's amazing he's a vocal coach and a singer and he's just amazing so that just lifted my mood totally totally made me forget everything and after while i was watching my friend drew rascal flats who is my favorite band ever i heard that they were going back on tour and i thought oh my god <laughs> I started screaming, uh, so I got really excited just to know that I was such in a horrible mood, and God sent a post from my friend Drew, and and my friend, um, and uh, Rascal Flatts, the interview, my favorite man. God knew what I needed, and and I knew um, that He loves me. He loved me, but I was caught between His love and the hard place I was in. And a and a lot of people just want to get away from the hard place, but the hard place is what teaches you things it what is what grows you up and i'm not saying life always has to be hard but i've learned at least in my life that's how i get the best lessons um when i go through something hard uh that's how I got the best financial lessons. That's how I got the best physical lessons. That's how I got the best emotional lessons. 
and sometimes even with people we're caught between our love for people and the hard places is that they put us in the difficult circumstances and when you're in a hard place with a person the lord said first of all um to assess the situation what kind of hard place are you in with the person is it a financial hard place is it a um relational hard place is it a um systemic hard place once you assess um the hard place with the person okay um now i know what kind of hard place i am in with the person and then what you do next is basically you just have to uh figure out what keys uh to this hard place with the person maybe keys is the wrong word like um you have to figure out okay this is a let's say if it was a um financial hard place with the person and so, sometimes um what what to do is you have to um after you assess what to do with the person then you kind of have to understand that it's the it's the it's the hard place that makes the relationship work and sometimes hard places require hard decisions and sometimes the best decision you can make when you're dealing with people is to let, let them go sometimes it's to stay sometimes it's to help them through sometimes it's to let them figure it out and that will come from the assessment that i was talking about so and each person and each situation is different um like some people they genuinely need you to, to help them you know and some people they need you to just let them figure it, figure it out on their own you know or w- without your input cuz sometimes depending on the situation what you do can harm them cuz if your mom who keeps on giving your 34 year old son money when they when they need it they'll never learn but if if and but if your son is like at uh, 10 and he needs lunch money that's your responsibility as a parent or maybe you need to put him on some kind of schedule or you know teach him uh, how to manage m- money through a bank account see it so the skills that you need in the hard place are different depending on the circumstance you're in that's what i wanted to say so the skills cuz sometimes god will ask you to move and sometimes he will ask you to stay and sometimes he will ask you to do something and sometimes he will say peace be still and sometimes 
he will ask you to leave it alone and sometimes he'll ask you to speak up so the tool the tool um the hard place tool or the hard place key will will depend on where god is taking you and where he uh wants you to go in the, or and what he wants you and what he wants to bring out of you in the situation because and even if you're going through the same situation as a person the tools for you may not be the same as the tools you use for that other person so two people can be going through the same kind of cancer and whatever but the but the tools for that person's healing is not the tools for the other person's healing also it's the same person same type of cancer they treat it differently because how far it is and because uh of what they need to do for the person's healing um i think sometimes what i'm learning about god is we like to generalize and say god will do this if you do that if you do that he will do this if you if you if you do that he will do this and whatever we like to make all these uh, generalizations because it makes it easier when you're preaching or when you're teaching to do that or we like to say to hear god you need to do this to get a closer relationship with god you need to do that or whatever and what i'm learning is god is so vast and he's so past what we would would think um his rep- repertoire repertoire of how to deal with people and how to bring out of people what he wants to bring out of people and bring forth through people what he wants to bring forth through them is so vast that it's so hard to say well god always works like this do this and you'll be fine and no that's not that's not true that's not true at all and uh sometimes i'll tell you the truth but hard places sometimes they're to bring stuff out of you and sometimes they're to bring stuff through you but sometimes uh as i said before but sometimes life is just hard sometimes life is just tough because that's just life and how it is and and but i think saying that everything is working out for a reason everything is working together for good even even when life is just tough it's working out for your good cuz everything you're going through you will need at some point you may not need it now you may need it 20 years from now you may, you may be going through something that you could use the next day depending on what god wants to do with your life and i think that it's time for us to stop um pretending that god could only work one way is it is it right for christians to listen to secular music for example and people would say some people would say no some people would say yes some people would say 
depending on the music and whatever. But I say it would, for that question, I would say, depending on what God wants to do through you. See, part of my ministry is to turn over secular music for the kingdom. So if I didn't listen to uh, secular music, I wouldn't have one of my key ministry tools that God has given me. And for another person, listening uh, to secular music takes them on a path of sex and sin and all of that stuff. So in that case, God, God might say, nope, for you, nope. And I think... Um, I think we need to teach people how to, I've said this several times before, get in their own rhythm with God and, under, and understand how he speaks to them. Because how God speaks to me is not how God speaks to you. How God works through me may not be how God works through you because you are a different person and he knows, first of all, he knows you inside out. Second of all, he knows what he wants to get from you and how he wants to work through you and what you need to bring that out of you. And he knows the tools to use to do that. And so we have the books, uh, um, Seven Step for Success and all that stuff. And, you know, that might work for, uh, for several people. And people, it might not work for because everybody's different. Everybody's path is different. Everybody's resources are different. And you just need to tap into what God is telling you to do and, and the path that God is taking you. And the, the beat that God has for your life. And I think that's why comparison is so difficult because so not not good because you're comparing yourself to that person, but your beat isn't say in isn't the same. Your structure isn't the same. Where God's taking you may may not be the same. And even if you're in the same career, it may be a different path that God wants for you. And you're stuck in comparison when God wants to do something completely new through you. And he's like, and he wants me to tell you today, um, your hard place will be worth something. Your hard place will be worth something. Even when life is hard and it's like, seems to be for no reason at all. It will be worth something. It will be worth something. And it will be one of the best lessons that you've ever experienced in your life. And it is so awesome. What, what God does in the hard secret places is just so awesome. It, it's like he strips you of, all, of everything that is you. And just so that he shines through. Every trial, every, every good thing, every bad thing is to show 
more of him through you. I'm convinced of this, that I'm becoming more like Christ day after day because of the hard places. Not to say that life has to be hard, but in my life, it, it's been like that. The struggle has really brought diamonds out of me. And, and sometimes I'm caught between knowing he loves me and going through the hard places. And it is awesome to even think of that and, and to even understand that this hard place won't kill you. This hard place won't kill you. And you're not caught between his love and the hard place. Let him love you through the hard place. You're not caught. You're not stuck. You're right where he wants you. And I know it's hard because you see things and you see things coming, but in your, in your, you see it in your mind, but in your daily life, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But I'm go, and you feel like you're going crazy. But I'm here to tell you, this hard place won't kill you. This hard place won't kill you. This hard place won't kill you. It feels like it, but it's actually, what you think will kill you is actually developing you. So use this hard place for development. I know it's hard, I know it's tough, but this hard place is for your betterment. I know it doesn't look like that because it's really hard and you're like, what the heck? but it is for your betterment. And life doesn't have to be hard um, all the time. There are, there are times where, where it has to be happy and it has to be um, joyous and joyful. We need those times too. But I'm here to tell you that this hard place you're in right now is for, is for your betterment. And his glory will shine through. And your attitude in the hard place will make a big difference. Watch your attitude in the hard place. Because his glory will shine through your attitude in the hard place. And you're like, why is this happening to me? And the Lord's saying, it's happening to you because you're strong enough to get through it. You're strong enough to get through it. And you will be, you will develop power and strategies from it because you've been through it. You're strong enough to get through it. And you will develop power and strategies to get through it. And he is developing you right now. in the hard place and you're caught between no knowing he loves you and the hard place but know that once again the hard place didn't come to kill you it comes it came to develop develop you and show you who you are who you are it's the greatest teacher to show you who you are, to show you your own strength, 
because the Lord knows what he put inside of you. You need to know what he put inside of you. You need to know how strong you are. You need to know who he's made you to be. And the hard place is smoothing out those rough edges in you. Don't fight against the hard place. Let it smooth out those edges. Don't be stubborn and start fighting God and start getting angry and start whatever. And start getting on bad. Knowing that the hard Know that the hard place is coming to smooth those rough edges out. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be taxing. You'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> but knowing, know that it comes to perfect you. It comes for the perfecting of your faith and the glorifying of his name. Thank you, Lord. Let, let the hard place be a testimony of the glory of God. Let the hard place be a testimony of the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. Lord Jesus, I don't thank you for the hard place, I but I thank you in it. I thank you for the lessons that you're that you're teaching me in it, and I thank you just for being God. I thank you just for being good. I thank you for being there. I thank you for teaching me. I thank you for developing me. I thank you for just showing me who I am, and more of who you are. I thank you for showing me your glory and show your people your glory in their hard places, whether it, be, whether it will be a financial hard place, whether it be a physical hard place, whether it be a spiritual hard place, whether it be an emotional hard place, whatever hard place you're there in right now. Show them you. Show them your glory and show them who they are in you, God. With you, who they are in the hard place. And perfect it. And perfect them in the hard place. Develop what you want to develop with whatever tools you want to use. And let us know that sometimes the tools that you want to use are not pleasant tools. They're sharp tools. They're tools that cut and tools that 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 um, refine. Lord God, but after the cutting and the chipping away and the refining, we will come out um, showing the world your glory, being the glorious creatures that you've called us to be, the glorious beings called humans that you formed us to be in these hard places. Take your holy sandpaper and smooth our edges out. Smooth our rough edges out. Smooth our self-esteem out. Smooth our tempers out, God. Give us the temperament that you designed us to have. In the name of Jesus. Take us to new levels in you, in the hard place. Speak to us about destiny and purpose in the hard place. Teach us in the hard place. Reveal to us who you are and in turn who we are. Give us purpose in planting us the seeds that you will grow in us, oh God. 
teach us how to grow in this hard place. Teach us how to grow in this hard place. Teach us how to grow in this hard place. Amen. He wants me to say that the hard place, the response to the hard place can be either two responses, to grow or to die. So you have a choice. Are you going to let the hard place kill you or grow you? And when I say kill you, it may not physically kill you, but it may emotionally kill you. It may spiritually kill you. It may psychologically kill you. And a lot of people um, have let those hard places kill them. They're like walking zombies. And the Lord wants to awaken those hard places today. So no, the Lord wants to awaken those people today that have gone through those hard places and tell you that there is life. There is life after the hard place. There is life after this situation. There is life after that broken relationship. There is life after that broken marriage. There is life after that broken financial situation. There is life after that broken church pastor. There is life after that mistake. There is life after that mistake. So you can either let the hard place grow you or kill you. It's your choice. If you want it to grow you, God will help you by bringing his love and people around you and resources around you. You wouldn't believe if you say, God, I just want this hard place to grow me. I, I don't want to die here. I don't want to be caught here. I don't want to be caught between your love and a hard place. I want it to grow me. I want it to grow me. I want the hard places to perfect me. And when you say that, be ready for whatever perfecting he has uh, to do. Be ready for a cutting. Be ready for a smoothing out with sandpaper. And sandpaper, if you've ever seen sandpaper, it is rough. But that rough sandpaper on wood, if you do it on wood a few times, it smooths out the wood. So let those hard places, those rough places, those difficult places, smooth you out. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hope, I hope I did you justice. I hope I delivered your word with precision. Take this word around the world. Impart destinies because of this word. Grow people because of this word. Put seeds in good soil because of this word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Okay, guys, see you next week.
Bye.